So the first is Yang Yan Chu Chen, and um, the title is We Gotta Think Positively. I'm ready. Yeah. Can I start? Yes. All right. At the beginning of our speech, I want to ask you guys a question. Would your mind affect your life? Well, you know the answer. Let me tell you a story. There was a boy who hates math. He always get B's and C's. But one day he do a test that showed he has a natural advantage in logic and his math should be pretty good. He believed it and grew to like math. Then magically his score improved madly. You might guess. Yes, the boy's me. But it's not that test gave me improved progress. It's positive thinking that helped. Positive thinking is to always see the bright side of the thing or event. So today we are going to talk about positive thinking is excellent. Negative thinking is a disaster and how to think positively. First, what are the benefits of positive thinking? Well, the most obvious one, and it makes people successful. For example, Helen Keller. She lost her sight and hearing when she was 19 months old. But now, she's a leading member of the American Foundation for the Blind, wrote in on the speaker, and was ranked as one of the most influential people of the 20th century. And yes, she had time because she don't know what to do, but she's always positive. Back up on the way. Now, let's consider the opposite way of thinking. And it's actually very easy to see that if she didn't think positively, she won't have been so successful and it would be a whole different story. From above, we could see that positive thinking is great. But the problem is, it is used in not much situation. In this year, we're not coming to the virus. To stop the virus spreading, all Chinese people lock themselves up in their home in self-detention. And as everybody knows, staying home for a long, long time is boring. And when people get bored, negative thinking, you should leave that pop up. If all people are negative thinking, then the doctors will not go to support Wuhan for the fear of being infected. The patients will sink into desperate and let their condition get worse. And those who lock themselves in their homes might have mental problems first, even they have no physical ones. So at first, I believe that soon all social media is going to be filled with all of that negative thinking. But then, surprisingly, our social media is filled with a soul of funny little stuff. There are people playing table tennis on their dining table. There are people fishing in their fish tank at home. And there are even people playing traditional Chinese lion bags in their homes. And obviously, this is positive thinking. Now, everybody sees what happens when positive thinking is working. The doctors are leading patients doing gymnastics to strengthen their bodies. The patients are happy and they are happy better. So now, the virus comes. Okay, now, we all know that positive thinking is good and necessary. But why are not much people using it? Well, people might not know how to think positively. Okay, so next, I'm going to talk about three ways of thinking positively. First, we need to find beautiful qualities of ourselves. According to a retention fact agreement put forward by Carradine, a famous American educator and speech artist, 80% of each person's characteristics is positive, only 20% are negative. So we should focus on the 80% which are positive. Second, we need to find the beautiful qualities of others. Only if we do this, we can make new friends and new our friends. And of course, they can positively with them. Plus, we need to find positivity in the world. If you find the world nice and positive, you'll follow the path to be positive. 
Okay, so today we talk about positive thinking is essential, negative thinking is not an option, and we also talk about three ways to think positively. Do you remember the question from the start of our speech? Well, the phrase of positive thinking is that if you believe in something good, you'll be good at it, and you'll believe in it more, and you'll be better at it. So, this virtuous loop will go on and on and on forever. Now, with all the benefits, let's go ahead and think positively. For my dear judges, I'd love if you also think positively of my speech. Thank you. So, uh, the, rest of, the rest of people, please mute yourself because there are a lot of noises. Okay, so our next contestant that's Hanlin. Hanli. Yes. Uh, hello, hello, judges. Can, uh, can you see my topic? Yes, a happy ending. Great, thank you. Okay, I'm ready. I don't know about the other judges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, are all judges ready? Yes, you may start now. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Han Lin Li. My code is Shanghai Star River 36210. Uh, judges already? Yes, great. Okay, so my time starts now. Recently, I watched a famous movie called True Lies, and I found an interesting scenario that even though the terrorists were so powerful, they were still defeated by the protagonist. In fact, when I watch any superhero movie, the good guy always wins. I mean, in almost all movies, the good guy always wins. That begs the question. Is it good for the theater industry to do this? Well, personally, I believe that shows should only present stories that have happy endings because these stories influence young people and make us emotionally stronger. First and most importantly, movies with happy endings influence young people to be a better person. Dr. Michelle Pass an associate professor of political science at the University of Dayton, conducted a recent study that shows movies can act as an influence on young people. Dr. Pass asked college students at a private Midwestern college to complete a questionnaire about their views on the government before and after watching two movies related to politics. She found that after watching the films, 20, to 25% of the participants changed their opinion and generally more favorably on a variety of questions about the government. Their trust in government increased, for example, as did their general optimism about the direction of the country. It should be kept in mind that young people are more likely to be influenced than older people, as mentioned by Dr. Parks. This is because they're still developing and shaping their worldviews, she said in an email interview. Since they are still being socialized politically, they are more likely to absorb all sorts of influences, including influences from film. Besides, watching positive movies appeal to young people's moral duty, making them more likely to do morally good things. Finally, some movies motivate young people. Young people may feel encouraged 
and know that even people who are less fortunate can succeed if they work hard. They will tend to work harder, both at school and their workplace. Movies definitely motivate youngsters to be a better person. Secondly, watching movies that have happy endings can make us feel better. Professor Ryan Barrow explains, in addition to bring laughter, which improves our mental health in various ways, the comedy industry offers an excellent outlet for people who need to get something off their chests. Or take the power back by making light of their mental health problems. It is also a great way to reach new audiences, help them learn more about mental illness, and normalize disorders in the public eye. I've also encountered a situation where watching movies made me feel better. I'm a karate player, and when I was preparing for the test to get my first black belt, I felt depressed because the training was so hard. Besides, if I didn't pass the test, it would have been such an embarrassment. One day, I decided to watch the movie Cars 3. One of my favorite movies, the main character Lightning McQueen encountered a situation where if he didn't win the competition, he would never be able to participate in race competitions again. That was his last chance. And he made it. I thought, my situation is super small compared to McQueen's. If he could win, I can pass the test too. Thus, I continued to practice and eventually got my black belt. Depression is something that many people encounter. According to the World Health Organization, 350 million people worldwide have depression. Many people even die because of this disorder. Thus, we need to know how to deal with it. And watching movies with happy endings is just one method to help fight this disease. Actually, even though watching movies is just one way to solve depression, it is an important one. You see, one cause of depression is pessimism, which means some people always think bad things will happen. Positive movies can certainly make people more optimistic and thus help them fight depression. Based on the aforementioned discussion, it is quite clear that shows should only present stories that have happy endings because these stories influence young people in a positive way and make us emotionally stronger. Therefore, let's make movies only present positive stories in order to make the world we love a better place. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, can I start now? Um, please, hold on. Excuse me? Please hold on. Okay. Okay, so the next is Michael. Michael, and um, the title is What is Our Next Global Challenge, right? Yes. Okay, I'm ready, and um, I would like my other judges to confirm if they are ready. Okay, so uh, I start now. Yes, I'm ready. You can start now. Okay. Good afternoon. Today, I'm going to talk about what is our next global challenge? To combat the new coronavirus in Wuhan, China built Broken Pill Hospital within 10 days. China's medical team for assistance to Serbia was greeted by the high courts. In the past few months, you have probably heard too many times of China 
it's on the news. No one in the world could have predicted the total outbreak coronavirus at the end of 2019, as known as COVID-19 pandemic. While the Divas coronavirus was spreading rapidly, most Chinese people were hoping to meet their sweet families and celebrate the traditional Chinese New Year. They did not know what was coming after them. Let me pause here. You are probably thinking I'm going to complain about COVID-19. Actually, I would like to say thank you. Not to thank the deadly virus, but to thank the people around me and our new life routine. Because of a virus, I'm still in prolonged winter break. Now children like me can go to school by taking online classes. Adults like my parents can work from home. My dream finally came true. As a family, we can spend more time together at home. Here, I'd like to share my positive Chinese way of thinking to everyone in the world. We can and we will stand together to defeat the coronavirus. At the same time, we should take the opportunity to think more about the problem that the whole world is facing today. For instance, Jack Ma and Bill Gates expressed their concerns about social distancing and encouraged people to interact more by using advanced communication tools and modern technology. Both of them also spoke up about another crisis affecting the whole world, global climate change. Earlier, we should also be thinking about climate change and its impact on the world. Climate change, like COVID-19, is a problem that the whole world has to overcome in the future. Because it affects every person, every country, and every continent. Thus, we must be prepared to solve this problem. Jack Ma also explained how the world will be negatively changed by climate change. If the Earth is sick, then humans will live a healthy life either. That means, in order to protect ourselves, we should start thinking about how to protect the Earth. The Earth is a natural gift that everyone shares, not a waste that everyone destroys. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 has forced us to study and work from home, leaving us with no other options, we really need to remember this heavy lesson that the nature plays a significant role than we could ever imagine. Without a healthy environment, the well-being of human species is also in danger. One day, while I was doing my homework at home, I opened the window in my study room to let in some fresh air. The sunshine was warm, and the air was sweet. It was a beautiful moment. It sounds nice because my house is safe, though there is a deadly virus outside. I am grateful that it was just a virus, not a natural disaster. Would I be able to enjoy my study time at home when there's a flood outside my door? COVID-19 is now gradually decreased, but what is our next challenge? Let's remember the lesson from COVID-19 and craft it to about environment managed. At the end of my speech, I'd like to thank everyone who has been fighting the coronavirus. You did not only save us from this crisis, but also reminded us to be prepared for our next global challenge. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I think it's my turn now. May I start? No, please wait. All right, take your time.
Okay, so our next is is Shan, and um, that will be me. Okay, and your title is "Are There Superheroes in the World?" Yes, I'm ready. And if my other judges are, then we can start. All right. My time starts now. Good afternoon. Have you ever seen any superhero movies? The superheroes in the movies are really cool, but those are just movies. Do you think that there are superheroes in the real world? Superheroes can rescue you whenever you need, wherever you are, and they will give you the treasures you want, the kinds of candy. At the age of nine, I was diagnosed with dyslexia and ADHD, which means that it's difficult for me to concentrate and read and write. It also explained why school had been tortured. Once, my English teacher was checking my reading log and she said, Wow, a fourth grader reading a comic book? That's easy. Hey look, even your desk mate's title is longer than your book. Well, I do admit that what we're talking about when talking about love, my review on Boy in the Striped Pajama Shore is a long title, but what's wrong with Dog Man? So there had been a time that I hated going to school, because I was afraid to face all the frustration. Sometimes I'd find excuses to avoid going to school and stayed at home all day. The staying at home days were empty. I had nothing to do but watch my classmates pass through the window, imagining myself fitting in like they did. I couldn't help asking myself, are there really superheroes in the world? Why isn't anyone flying into my world, taking me under his wings, and just rescuing me from this darkness? No superhero came to my rescue, but my world did change when my parents moved me to a new school. There, I was lucky enough to have met teachers who treated me with care and respect. They, they allowed me to read comic books or listen to audiobooks. They gave me kind reminders when I lost myself in the middle of class. It made me realize I'm not a loser as long as I've tried my best. And I've plenty to be proud of myself for. And above all, that I should never, ever give up on myself. Now, some areas on my score report are still disastrous, but I am not afraid anymore. So yes, there are superheroes in the world. Family, friends, teachers, nice people out there who accept you as you are and make a difference in your life. They are the superheroes who can always rescue you whenever you need, wherever you are. And they will give you the treasures you need, like love, faith, and courage. This year is the time to talk about superheroes. Because of the novel coronavirus outbreak, the names of many ordinary people have been remembered as superheroes. I'm talking about the doctors and nurses who are willing to risk their lives to save others. I'm talking about the journalists and scientists who never stop seeking for the truth. I'm talking about the security guards and social workers who are serving on the front line. And oh, how can I forget the delivery guys who has brought my mom endless joy? They're fighting for a safer city, which is exactly what a superhero would do. I'm talking about us, you and me. We can all do something here and now. Superheroes make a difference with their superpowers, while we can make a difference with our words and actions. We can stop labeling the virus by using its geographic locations. We can stop turning a cold face to someone who's from the epidemic driven area. We can all be fighters and superheroes to use our voice for the voiceless, to turn the worst of the times into the best of times. We can hold on and unite together, like how people in the superhero movies do, to fight against the virus, doubts, fear, and discrimination, to go hand in hand through the darkness towards the season of hope. Believe that you are never, 
ever too little to make a difference, and that you can be your own superhero. Thank you. Um, may I start? Please wait. All right. Okay, so the next is um, Wu Yan. Wu Yan. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. And the title of the oratory is Don't Be Kidnapped by Social Media. Yes. Okay, I'm ready. If the other judges are ready, then you um, can stop. I'm ready. My time starts now. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura. Today, the topic of my speech is Don't be kidnapped by social media. Because of the coronavirus outbreak this spring, over 1 billion people around the world are self quarantined or being quarantined. Even you go out, you're required to keep social distance with others. So in this case, how can we connect and communicate with the outside world? The answer is obvious, social media. According to the Digital 2020 Global Overview Report, over 3.8 billion people around the world are using social media. In 2019, Chinese people can spend up to 139 minutes on social media every day. No one can deny that social media has become an essential part of people's life. But the problem is some people are using social media in the wrong way. In this speech, I'm going to talk about how we use social media wrongly and the right ways to use it. Social media is a good way to communicate but it could be dangerous and harmful when it is used improperly. In fact, it can destroy our lives. Let's see how. First, when you begin to neglect face-to-face -face communication with others and being addicted to social media at the same time, you're using it in an improper, impro inappropriate way. Every time when my mom takes me to dinner in a restaurant, I suppose it could be a wonderful girl's time. However, she is always as busy as a bee. Unfortunately, not busy with me, but busy with taking photos of the dishes, sharing in a friend circle, and checking to her phone from time to time to see how many people like her post. I have to say it is a really bad experience for both of us. Second, when you use social media just for bragging rights, instead of actually focusing on the moment itself you're sharing, they're using it improperly. I can still remember the beautiful sunset in Yellowstone National Park. Its spectacular image and dramatic color are vivid in my mind. But some people, including my parents, just focus on taking the perfect picture, brightening the colors, creating the right mood, instead of actually enjoying the sunset in real time. What a funny thing to do, don't you think? Third, when you have too little time doing everything else and was not happy about it, you're seriously wrong. A study published on the American Journal of Preventative Medicine in 2017 said that if you use social media too much a day, you'll be less confident and less fulfilled. They tested this on 11 different media platforms like Facebook or Instagram, even career-oriented platforms like LinkedIn, but no matter where they looked, the results were always the same. Social media had a negative effect on people's happiness. So if you keep doing this over and over again each day, you can fall into a black hole of your emotions and you can have negative emotions more than positive ones. I'm very sad to say this, but a majority of people are using social media in the wrong way. So this problem can affect everyone, including you. 
So how can we use social media in the right way? Here are some suggestions. Firstly, spend more quality time with your family and your friends. Don't value virtual connections more than real ones. Secondly, pay attention to their memorable moments as they happen and appreciate experiences for what they are. Don't take them as another chance to brag on social media. Thirdly, limit your everyday screen time. Set yourself free from the phone and social media from time to time. At last, I want to remind you all, don't be kidnapped by social media. It is only one of the ways to communicate. Your life will not be worse without social media. Instead, it might be better off. Thank you. So I'll wait a uh, half a minute for uh, the judges to finish the ballot. Are the judges ready? Please, five seconds. Okay, don't worry, take your time. I'm ready. What about the others? Are the other judges ready? Hello judges, are you girls ready? Yes, I'm ready. So, can I start? Sure. Okay. Life is about duality. There's happiness. There's sadness. There's light. There's dark. There's hope, there's hurt. You may think that this is from a piece of famous writing, but it's actually from a 17-year-old school basketball star, Kevin Brill, a sufferer of depression. While well, everyone else saw an excellent basketball player at high school, Kevin was just a boy who was tortured over and over again by intense pain. Stigma, as Kevin mentioned in his speech, is why depression is often associated with shame and weakness, which gives them a fear to ask for help. They pretend to be normal, but they feel desperate inside. So desperate that sometimes they chose to end their life. Just like Kevin Brill, there's a large number of young people that are experiencing depression in China. A research from the Global Disease Burden shows that the percentage of depressed young people keeps increasing significantly 
from 2005 to 2015. I often hear sad news about teenagers committing suicide because of oppression. These stories have inspired the stand here and talk about what we can do to help people with oppression. In China, many cases of depression are caused by pressure at school. The Chinese education system emphasizes greatly on grades. Teachers will make students do as much exercise as possible to get a high score on exams. One way is to criticize them and compare them with other students. Why well, do you make some mistakes? I'm very disappointed that you are top five in class. In the short term, this may pressure some students to do well in exams, but they will have a high level of anxiety and a lack of confidence in the long run. Another unfortunate common phenomenon at school is bullying. In the past, it was mostly physical bullying. With the social media getting more popular nowadays, cyberbullying also becomes more common. Random people that you may don't even know can leave rude comments to anyone they don't like. And it's unlikely for you to run away from it. It's not like you can start from new internet, like a new school. Besides the education system and bullying, an unhealthy family relationship, like a lack of creation, diverse, and even domestic violence, can eventually lead to teenage depression. So what can the individual do to make the situation better? The answer isn't complicated at all. Instead of telling the press about the change, we can be the change. We should stop thinking that it's their problem or that there's little that we can do. First, we need to learn more about depression. For example, if we're more familiar with symptoms of depression, it is more likely for us to notice if someone around us is suffering from it. So then we can take actions to help them recover faster. Second, we need to learn how to react to people after they shared the depressing story with us. Most people will say things like, yeah, I think they're true, or don't worry, you'll get over it, which can actually hurt the sufferer's feeling even more. One important thing is to always be a good listener. This is a good way to show support for them. Instead of telling them what to do, I'll always be here for you. Probably works better. Last but not least, we need to work together to fight against the stigma of depression. When people around us make comments about depressed people being shameful and weak, stop them. Tell them that they're making the situation worse. I hope the more people can be like Kevin Brew, who's open to share his experience with the entire world and stop living a dual life. I hope the more people can embrace the press people with kindness and sympathy. You, me, and everyone needs to believe that depression is something that we can overcome with small actions. Be the change starting from today. Thank you. Is it okay for me to start? No, please hold on. Oh, okay. Okay, so for the next contestant, I think it 
title is target. Okay, so my time. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Okay, my time starts now. The topic of my speech today is target. And before I go into that, I would like to share with you a phenomenon I noticed in the past few months. On the hot search web, it has been bombarded by youngsters who have accomplished major success early on in their lives. A 15-year-old who was able to attend a worldwide science conference, a 16-year-old gaining worldwide fame for promoting global warming to the world, and a 19-year-old who received a postgraduate degree from Peking University. And as I scrolled down to the comments area, the netizens commented with fascination, as if they were trying to dig out the secrets behind these successes. And this did make me wonder, is there actually a secret, a shortcut, or even a formula towards success? And after doing some research, I actually did come up with an answer. There's no such thing as a shortcut or formula towards success. But what's indispensable in order for someone to be successful is having a target. So what do I mean by having a target? Having a target means having a distinct goal we have set for ourselves, and we are extremely unambiguous about what it is. And whether someone can successfully achieve their targets depends entirely on the perseverance and efforts you put into getting it. And going back to those really successful youngsters that went viral over the internet, I realized that they all have one common characteristic in common, which is having a distinct target at a tender age. This is the benefit of having a good goal at a young age. It actually opens up the road of success for those who have the vision and the motivation to succeed. A while ago, another discussion on the internet actually caught my attention and gave me a more distinct definition of what it means by having a good target. The discussion was how elderly define a proper career. I'm positive that for our grandparents' generation, a proper career would probably mean being a teacher, a lawyer, or a doctor. And actually, this type of really old-fashioned ideology still exists in our society today. And I would say among the majority of parents. They define success in their own terms and use it to determine the future of the next generation. But does this count as a target? I would say no because it is limiting the amount of possibilities youngsters is capable of and passionate about. And it's like trapping them inside a little bubble. We have to understand that the reasons why targets are so indestructible is because we are passionate enough. And because of passion, we believe, we pursue, and ultimately we achieve. I once read a quote, passion can undergo the endless years. Passion is a lamp. And despite the years of pursuit and the hardship in betweens, it would always shine in the darkness. And it's that faint light in the dark that gives us the courage to stand up every time we fall. Those who are successful in life have an unswayed target and belief. They are resilient, even on the verge of failing. The quote says, the animals that can reach the top of the mountains can either be the talented eagles or the heartbreaking scales. And I would prefer to be the latter, because no matter how unrealistic your dream is, as long as you have the perseverance and the target, even the smallest snails can enjoy the views from on top of the mountains. For those who are successful and the reasons why they are where they are today, it isn't because of the achievements they made in the past. And instead, it's their spirit in pursuing their dreams that brought them to where they are today. Thank you. Thank you. Um,
Um, okay. Can I start? I'm ready. Okay. Um, is everyone ready? Hi everyone, my name is Lu, and today my topic is Together We Stand. Together We Stand is the slogan of our school. I used to assume it just means we take care of and help each other. But now I have better and deeper understanding of it. How? Let me tell you the following things that have happened since the novel coronavirus outbreak. As of February 17th, more than 32,000 medical workers from all over China had gone to Hubei. They have to work consecutively for six hours. Do you know what they do to earn more time to treat the patients? They work tiredness so they can save time going to the bathroom. Besides, many medical workers sleep for only two hours and eat just an orange and a cup of yogurt the entire day, but they never shrink back. While these heroes in harm's way are risking their lives on the front lines of the epidemic, ordinary people have also created a solid shield to combat along with the medical staff. In Wuhan, the epicenter of the outbreak, a team of virus staff works very hard to offer free coffee for daycare local medical workers. 500 cups of coffee are delivered to the hospitals twice a day. Can you guess what happened next? The news took a responsive tour with people online and the team got 1 million RB donations, as well as offers of help from milk and coffee bean suppliers. But that is not the end. The team will learn to public, saying that when the outbreak is over and after the cost of ingredients is covered, our remaining donation money will be put into a special foundation for all of the frontline medical staff in Wuhan. I am so proud of these people. As you know, there is an acute shortage of medical masks and protective suits due to the COVID-19, so some machinery companies have developed production lines to manufacture these things, and a lot of citizens are in a rush to hold with the packaging. My aunt was on them. She went to a factory with other volunteers in Jingshan District in Shanghai around the middle of February. That factory manufactures t shirts for local clothing brands, but now the photo production line has been temporarily discontinued. The factory bought a dust free hair production line recently to manufacture protective clothing. My aunt worked at the factory area. What they need to do is to fold and pack the protective clothing. According to my aunt, it's not easy for beginners and flowers tend to fold it too big for the bag. Moreover, it's more challenging to do it with a medical mask. You sweat and feel dizzy after half day's work. However, no one gave up halfway. They all work from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and they help pack thousands of protective suits that day. She told me, although the work was dull and repetitive, they all felt happy inside. My aunt set a good example for me, and I would apply to be a volunteer in Iowa. I've never experienced this before. To me, all these things are really touching and shocking. Everyone is making his or her contribution, like a tiny star shining brightly. And we will form a galaxy as long as we stay together. This is the essence of Together We Stand. Together makes us strong and gets an indestructible power to fight in this war without gunfire. We're also demonstrating this powerful spirit to the world. Nothing can stay our way as long as we stay together. And I believe we will win this war in the near future because together we stand. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. So, dear judges, would you like to give some feedback on them? Okay, maybe, yeah. 
please hold on. I'm just finishing the uh, the, the paper feedback. Sure, thank you. Okay, so I just want to say something about the uh, speech you just have given to us. I think all of you have given a very vivid and uh, wonderful speech during this uh, part. And um, uh, I want to say something about those um, each speech one by one, okay? So the first one, we're gonna think positively. Okay, so I think it's a it's a very good start to uh, begin your speech with a story, and also you mentioned a lot of benefits of uh, the positive thinking uh, with a really great passion. Okay, so I, I like that very much, and also uh, in the end of your speech, you mentioned three ways, and um, uh, that makes the speech very complete. But I think the Three ways um, should be limited to one or two and uh, explain more in depth. So that, will, that would be better if you do so, okay? So for the second one, a happy ending, I like your passion very much and your hand gestures are powerful and vivid, okay? And also you give your personal uh, example in the elaboration of the importance of movies. Uh, I think that's a good one and uh, it's very convincing. So um, also uh, you seem to have, uh, really believe that um, uh, we should have a, a good ending with uh, every movie. Okay, so that's great. You have a better understanding of the topic. Okay, um, for the third one, sorry. I just said thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, for the third one, um, I, I noticed that um, uh, some of you used the current issue, the COVID-19, to start your speech. I think that's very good uh, uh, to show that you really have a good concern of, uh, about what, happening, what is happening around us. And also, this topic is very familiar to all of us. And, uh, um, also, uh, you, you really did a great job to shift the good aspects of seeing at home to the problems we are facing now. Okay, so that's quite uh, thought-provoking. Um, okay, so this is the... Suggestion. Sorry? Thank you for the suggestion. Okay. Um, and for the fourth, are there superheroes in the world? Well, um, I like the part that you start the topic with a, with a question which causes us to think. Uh, it's a very nice try. And also, um, the definition you, given to, you give to the uh, superheroes is very excellent. And um, you also use your personal examples, which is great. Um, but I think more others should be uh, involved to make your uh, statement more convincing, okay? So, um, and also I like your pace of delivery. It's very smooth and very uh, natural, okay? So this is the fourth one. And also don't be kidnapped by social media, okay? So this is a very hot topic and a very important topic because social media seems very uh, important nowadays. But um, during the outbreaks, we can see that um, uh, we can't we can't live without the social media okay so but also uh you want us to to pay attention to the impact of uh, overusing social media and also you used your personal experience okay so i think you 
uh, your personal experience makes the uh, claim and makes the topic, makes your statement uh, much vivid, okay? Um, also, you call for the proper use of the social media. Um, I also want to mention that um, that's great to call for the proper use of social media for, by you also use some specific approaches, but uh, due to the time limit, due to the time limit, and I think um, those specific approaches need to be uh, more, explain, uh, more explained in depth, okay? So this is the fifth one. And uh, the sixth, be the change. Um, uh, you use a lot of data and evidence uh, in your speech, which is uh, great and uh, which makes your claim very convincing. And also, if your state, uh, thesis statement can be um, provided more clearly, that would be better. Um, also, uh, you also mentioned a lot of social issues. Okay, so uh, if, we, if, if you can explain how to deal with those issues, um, it would be, it will make your speech uh, very better, okay? Um, also, yes, okay, so those issues you mentioned in your speech are very severe and also provoke our thinking, and I, I'd like to thank you for that, okay? Um, so the, for the seventh, the target, uh, I like your clear statement. Okay, so it is uh, um, provided very well and some questions are raised to catch our attention in your speech, which is great. And uh, also in your body parts contains convincing evidence and uh, uh, survey to well support your claim. That's very wonderful. And uh, um, so uh, also elaborate what kind of target is proper. Okay, so uh, to enrich your body parts. Okay, so well done in this part. And last one, together we stand, together we stand also, you start your topic with the current issue of COVID-19, which deduced your statement of standing together and explained, well explained how, uh, what those teams cooperate together to reach a good result uh, in, in your body parts, which um, makes, your, uh, makes your speech quite, com uh, quite complete. And also, you really give us a good performance in the deliver in the de delivery with a great passion and enthusiasm. Also, you show you show the importance of standing together with the latest evidence. That's very smart. Okay, so thank all of you for your uh, thank you, outstanding guys. performance. Okay, so you are welcome. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge Wang. And thank you so much for your uh, feedback. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for Thank your all of you. guidance. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Wait, 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 sorry. So, what about the other two judges? Hello. Uh, um, so, based on the time limitation, and I think the previous judge have commented on each of you a lot, so I'm gonna give you a very generous suggestion to all of you because I think some of you like share too much in common, like the high pitch and the high pitch on each word and the same body gesture, something like that. And I think you guys should find your unique and figure out how to live in front of others. For example, there are many people use the inspiring examples of COVID-19. And can I use the touch one? And everyone use the high pitch or in the high voice. And can I mix different type of tonations and pitch here? And like that. Bye, have a nice day. Thank you, thank you very much. So, what about Judge Elena? Hi, wow, both judges have already said a lot, but I think um, most of my comments are specific on the on the on the online ballot. I wouldn't say <clears throat> you guys did bad. Actually, each and everyone did good. You just need to practice more. You just need to keep um, finding ways to innovate your story because at the end of the day, it's about making yourself unique in the competition. In as much as everybody wants to talk about COVID-19, in as much as everybody wants to talk about uh, a global pandemic, uh, issues relating to 
our world, it's not just about saying what is the obvious, but putting it in a unique way. So this is more like a general feedback for everybody to do more practice, to be more innovative in your delivery. And I think overall, everybody is good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now we have finished the whole competition. 